Hey, Will. Uh, it's Michael, obviously. Um, just responding to your message on Facebook, asking me about uh, my opinion, uh, per your words. Interesting take. Your thoughts on an article that you found uh, on Pink Floyd's The Division Bell. Uh, the article title is Pink Floyd's The Division Bell is a lesson in unfortunate power of nostalgia. Um, very interesting. Uh, why they're going back to the division bell? Probably because it's been 20 years since it came out. Um, actually, 20 years as of April 23rd, uh, 2014. Um, like everything with Pink Floyd, they're they're always going to compare it with stuff that they always done from the past. You know, uh, does it hold up to Roger Waters' Pink Floyd or even Sid Barrett's Pink Floyd? Um, like every other band that has been out since the late 60s, early 70s, my take on it is not everybody's Floyd preference is going to be the same. Uh, if you talk to Pat, um, you know, he'd prefer Sid Barrett's Pink Floyd over David Gilmore's Pink Floyd. Uh, if you talk to Russ, um, shit, he might even say he preferred the Smiths over Pink Floyd. Uh, which I'm sure might be a true statement. I don't know. You'll have to ask him. But um, I personally am a big fan of this album. Um, it, it takes me back to a place in time. Uh, you're talking about 1994. 1994 has a, has a, a lot of significance to me. Um, the album came out in a transition period where I was still living in Newark, and um, – Pat, and, Pat, Russ, and I were very close, and uh, this was before I moved down to Middletown, and we kind of, you know, lost touch. Um, as I was making that transition, um, I remember for the first two weeks of my seventh grade year, this was the fall of 94, I was still living in Newark, but I just started going to, um, to school in Middletown, and I was being dropped off in Claiborne, which is right off of 896. I remember my mom driving me to that neighborhood so I can take the bus down to Reading uh, Middle School. And the uh, the seventh track, I'm sorry, the uh, ninth track off this album, uh, Keep Talking, was big on the radio. Um, so I remember listening to this a lot at that time in 94. Um, other than listening to Dark Side of the Moon and Wish You Were Here, I didn't know really uh, and the, the wall of course i didn't really know too much about uh pink floyd and the back catalog and the sid barrett days and all that but to make a long story short to answer your question or try to answer your question as best as i can um i hold this album in high regard over a momentary lapse of reason other than learning the fly uh the rest of the album as you would guess from the article that you had sent me is essentially a David Gilmore solo album. Nick Mason, who is the only member of Pink Floyd to be on every single Pink Floyd album ever made. Um, I mean, he's been there since, you know, Piper's at the Gates of Dawn. He's the only out member to be on every single album. Um, essentially that was a, that was a David Gilmore solo album with a little help from, Nick Mason and um, later Rick Wright rejoined the band at that point, but he wasn't in, reinstated as a full member until the, the division bell. What makes this album so special for me is the fact that it it reminds me a lot of the musical passages from Wish You Were Here, which is uh, is a very keyboard um, heavy album. Um, despite the fact that at that point, Roger Waters was really taking the reins um, as far as the writing and um, what the songs were about. But as far as the mood um, off of Wish You Were Here, that's what The Division Bell reminds me of. There's a lot of Rick Wright in that album. Um, and of course, as you know, the new album that just came out, uh, The Endless River, are taken from those same recording sessions from this album. And in fact, according to the internet, originally this was supposed to be um, 
somewhat of a double album of sorts that, you know, this was going to be the commercial album and that what was supposed to come out later was going to be um, the the ambient type, you know, smoke a joint, trip, you know, take some acid and, you know, really get into it kind of album. Um, you know, sit down and, and listen to it, you know, straight through, um, which is what a Pink Floyd album is meant to do. Um, you know, you have your singles here and there, but really you have to sit down and listen to the whole entire album. Um, a lot of the songs has Rick Wright's signature keyboards all over it. Um, wearing the Inside Out, uh, which is actually a track sung by R Richard Wright, which is the first track since uh, Time off of Dark Side of the Moon, which he sang. Uh, Maroons, um, What Do You Want From Me, Cluster One. Um, this is essentially a great album. If you're if you're not a Pink Floyd fan, I mean, you obviously wouldn't get it. But if if you sat down and listened to the whole entire history, um, I, I think this is an album that a lot of Pink Floyd fans would appreciate and would probably rank um, up there with me personally with Dark Side of the Moon or Wish You Were Here or Animals. Um, I mean, I, I I mean, I like it all. It, it's 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 kind of like having children. It's kind of Hard to say, you know, which one's your favorite. Um, the Wall has kind of been overplayed, although great to see live. Um, if one was old enough back in 1980, 81 to see it live, or if you saw it when Roger Waters came around and did it live, um, that's a great show to see. But um, but anyway, to answer your question, you know, they talk about a lot of, um, you know, is this still really Pink Floyd? Uh, which was the opening line from Rolling Stone's original interview back in 94. You know, back then there was a lot of apprehension. Even still at that point, they already re released A Momentary Lapse of Reason, and then The Division Bell came out, and then they were still, you know, calling it Pink pink Fraud is what they were calling it because Roger Waters wasn't a part of it. And at that point, you know, Pink Floyd is bigger than, you know, has become bigger than its its members, you know. It's become larger than life than, you know, than the, the story of Sid Barrett or, you know, Roger Waters, you know, spitting on a fan in Montreal, which created, which started the whole thing with the wall and, you know, a momentary lapse of reason. Um, you know, a momentary lapse of reason for me is not, not, not a great album. Um, there are some, there are a few tracks on it that I think that are pretty good, but other than that, you know, other than, you know, uh, learning to fly, I mean, it's, it's pretty much a Gilmore solo album, but the division bell really was a, an album that was created with the three remaining members, everybody else, uh, the other members that came in, like the, the other keyboard player, uh, Guy Pratt, who was the uh, the session bass player on that album and the tour, uh, the the singers on the album who also did the tour as well, um, you know, they were just kind of afterthoughts, kind of giving it a little bit of polish. The other good thing about this album that some people who aren't into Pink Floyd might not know is that um, Dick Perry, the saxophone player who played on Money and Us and Them. Um, off of Dark Side of the Moon, came back and did a track, um, Wearing the Inside Out, did a sax bit on that. So, really, to me, this is as classic as any other Pink Floyd, such as Metal, Dark Side of the Moon, which you were here. Other, you know, other than the fact that those are iconic albums, 20 years on, I, I think we could put this on the list as, as iconic. Um... I see where I'm just going 10 minutes here. I don't know if I'm even answering your question or not. I'm just kind of rambling. Uh, by the way, this uh, is sponsored by Golden Monkey. I have been doing a little bit of drinking. And if you get a free moment, you and Bree want to come over, hang on out, listen to music, do whatever. Uh, maybe sometime after the new year. I know with the holidays, it's been crazy and everything. But anyway, getting back to business. Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, by the time Pink Floyd was in the process of recording the division bell, it's been eight years since bassist and songwriter waters had left the band. 
Uh, it goes on and on about, uh, you know, how he was forced to quit the band unless he was going to be sued and he was going to lose all his money and royalties and all that kind of shit. Um, you know, it it, it really, it, it's just them, to put it bluntly, they're rehashing something that doesn't need to be rehashed. It's somebody blogging or writing and they're comparing the division bell to other albums which they feel are better you know i mean dark side of the moon is a great album i mean a lot of their albums are great i mean it's hard if, if you talk to someone who's not a pink floyd fan and you ask them their opinion they'll obviously the very first album they say is dark side of the moon you know, or if they if they're trying to be clever, they'll Wikipedia and be like, "Oh, Piper of the Gates of Dawn is my favorite album because Sid Barrett was so great." Sid Barrett was a fucking lunatic from the beginning. Okay, you have to be really fucking crazy in order to appreciate that album. Luckily, I am that crazy. Uh, to listen to that kind of music and to appreciate that kind of music. So if you're just as crazy and if you love that album, uh, you know, you made a friend for life. But, you know, really, in order to in order to get the whole scope of Pink Floyd, uh, you have to listen to maybe not every single album chronologically all the way through, but you have to listen to it enough to pick out the – the subtle differences and also the whole entire string that's going through each album, the consistency. And part of the large consistency is um, obviously being Nick Mason, the only member to be on every single Pink Floyd album uh, with his drumming, which even though he's a simple drummer, um, he is a perfect drummer for that kind of music. Uh, if you took him out and stuck Phil Collins in, or if you stuck Alan White or Bill Burford in, it wouldn't be Pink Floyd. It, it was his style of drumming that made those albums flow. The other thing that made those albums flow was Rick Wright's keyboard playing. Um, and unfortunately, that was something that was lost during Roger Waters' last album, The Final Cut, which like a momentary lapse of reason was Gilmore's solo album. Uh, the final cut was Roger Waters' solo album. So, um, you know, six of one, half dozen another to me. Um, but also, you know, David Gilmore being throughout there too, you know, all in all, the division bell to me, I would consider a classic Pink Floyd record. Um, and, that's just my opinion. Other people will say it's shit, it's crap. Well, I'll tell you what. One thing that one should agree on within the rock community is that the Division Bell was a lot better – I'm sorry, not a lot, but a much better record than A Momentary Lapse of Reason. Momentary Lapse of Reason was able to get them through the MTV generation you know, with, their, with the, the music video for Learning to Fly. Other than that, there was no music video. Um, I think another thing that part of this uh, touched on was whether promotion was based upon name alone. Do I agree with that? Yes, Pink Floyd is an iconic name, and um, I, you know, I think that was the reason why uh, the Endless River sold or sold as well as it did. Uh, I think in England it. Um, kicked off either Adele or Taylor Swift for um, the number one um, pre-sale album in the UK. Um, obviously in the US it's different nowadays because, you know, people in the United States musically have their priorities a little bit mixed up. Again, my opinion, that's all it is. But um, but yeah, I, I like the Division Bell. I think that's a, it's a pretty good solid record start to finish. Um, and uh, the follow-up, The Endless River, is a, is a good album, too. Um, you know, it, it's, it's an album where you can unplug and uh, just listen to it. I mean, it, it, again, these Pink Floyd is a band that you literally have to sit down, and, and if you're going to listen to it, 
you listen to it start to finish. Um, you know, if it, if your iPod or whatever happens to be on shuffle and money comes on or uh, echoes or whatever, if you feel like listening to that and zoning out to that for a little bit, that's fine too. But, um, you know, if you're going to listen to the wall, you know, uh, dedicate it to it, you know, dedicate the time to listen to it from in the flesh to outside the wall. Um, I think with the division bell, you can do that too. Uh, cluster one to um, high hopes. I think you can do that too. So uh, anyway, uh, this is why I didn't want to type it out because there, there was a lot to be said. There was a lot to be covered. Um, I hope almost 16, 17 minutes uh, didn't take too much time. <laughs> um, but uh out of your evening or day or whenever you decide to watch this. But um, again, Will, thank you for sending that to me because this kind of stuff interests me. And uh, any other article that you see that you think that I might be interested in, um, I'm more than happy to uh, to share my thoughts and, and, and vice versa. Um, progressive rock, jazz. I mean, I listen to a lot of different stuff. But, uh, you know, when you're talking about Pink Floyd, or yes, Genesis, King Crimson, anything like that at all. Anything you want to shoot my way, I'd be more than happy to uh, to give you my opinion. And, uh, you know, vice versa, too. Uh, I hope you and Bree and uh, the kids have a good holiday, good Christmas, um, happy New Year's. Um, and uh, hopefully we'll get to see you at some point, um, you know, immediately after the New Year. Uh, had a lot of fun the last time we hung out with you guys. And... Um, you know, hopefully we can do it again soon. You know, maybe have you guys over at the house. So uh, maybe the next time you're over, maybe I can throw this on. Although I don't know if my wife would appreciate that. Um, you know, they, girls might have to go into a separate room, and you and I will probably have to come down here to the Wolf Den and uh, you know listen to that you know by ourselves. Um, because you know, frankly, you know, progressive rock and women, um, you know, is like uh, pot and alcohol. You know, sometimes they just don't mix. All right. I'll talk to you later, man. Have a good one. Did I stop this thing? <sighs> fucking technology. I'm used to a fucking camcorder. <sighs> man, also a relic from 1994. How about that, huh?